Hello. Hello. Sensei, you look gloomy today. What's wrong? You may be right. Actually, I've brought you a very difficult topic today. Today's theme is Kimoto and Yamahai. Is it about me? Not about you, Kimoto, but about Kimoto, sake. Oops. Have you ever heard of these terms? I've heard a sake connoisseur mention them before, but have no idea what they are. Well, to put it simply, Kimoto and Yamahai are both names of traditional production methods. It's usually mentioned on the label because it represents a specific style and profile of sake when made in this way. To understand Kimoto and Yamahai, let me first explain the standard sake brewing process. Sake brewing requires an important microorganism called yeast to produce alcohol from starch. To ensure healthy fermentation by yeast, the addition of lactic acid bacteria is necessary to prevent other spoilage bacteria from breeding. Lactic acid bacteria? Yes, lactic acid bacteria called lactobacilli plays an important role in preventing the growth of spoilage bacteria. I've heard a lot about lactic acid bacteria. It's in yogurt, right? But didn't know they had such a role in making sake. Yes, it has a very important role. Nowadays, sake brewing technique has advanced so much that we can simply add commercially cultured lactic acid bacteria. But in the olden days, there was no skill to culture lactic acid bacteria, so it was necessary to wait until it came in and grew naturally. Kimoto and Yamahai inherited this traditional method and continue to use natural lactic acid bacteria. Natural means, are they around me? Yes, in fact, lactic acid bacteria can be found everywhere. On plants, animals and fermented foods. But it takes a long time and effort to culture natural lactic acid bacteria to protect the yeast in order for healthy fermentation, and in turn, produce much alcohol. I see, it takes time and effort. That's why only about 10% of all sake is made using this method, and the remaining 90% is made using modern techniques. Why bother making it the hard way? Well, both methods have different benefits. Of course, the modern technique is more efficient and can achieve consistent quality in a shorter time. During the fermentation process, there is an essential step of making the yeast starter, the source of the mash, before fermenting in larger tanks. The modern technique takes only two weeks to make the yeast starter, whereas the traditional method of Kimoto and Yamahai takes one month. The traditional method is time-consuming but produces sake with rich acidity, umami, and a complex flavor. Isn't the quality of sake made from the traditional method unstable? Due to the length of time it takes to increase natural lactic acid bacteria, every so often, the sake turns bad. So sometimes spoiled sake needs to be disposed of and started again from scratch. Oh, my goodness. Yes, making Kimoto and Yamahai is very difficult. But they have flavor profiles that modern technology can never produce. The techniques of Kimoto and Yamahai can be used in all types of sake, like Ginjo, Genshu or Junmai. The taste is usually much richer and has more depth when compared to those made using modern brewing techniques. That's why it has many fans and is hugely popular, especially among sake enthusiasts. That, that makes sense. sense. How did you like this episode? Did you manage to get some ideas about Kimoto and Yamahai? Yes, it takes a lot of time and effort to make. But they're both very interesting sake. And super popular. Perfect if you're also able to describe its deep and complex flavor profile.